Hello guys and welcome back to the second video of our summer term. For today's video, we'll be having our first lesson and it's all about limits. So let's go to our slides. For our first lesson, we'll be discussing the definition of the limit of a function. What is a limit? And why do we call it a limit in the first place? First, let's set some learning objectives. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to illustrate the limit of a function using table of values and the graph of the functions. So you are very familiar with the table of values and the graph of the function from your previous subject in general mathematics. And lastly, distinguished between the difference of the limit of f of x as x approaches c and the function f evaluated at C. And some reminders before we start. Take down notes and summarize. Next, we are going to use graphing calculator. So I'll be using Desmos. And so for our graphing calculator, I'll be using Desmos. So in your mobile app you can actually download this just type desmos graphing calculator and it will appear or if you're using your personal computers or laptops so you can actually go to this site desmos.com slash calculator so this is very important to us because we're dealing with functions so if we have a function let's say f of x equals x squared so it's very easy for us to see the graph of the function and understand the importance or the concept of limit in relation to this function next is the use of scientific calculator For those who are using your mobile phones, you can actually download this scientific calculator, Hi Edu Scientific Calculator HE570. So the features of this scientific calculator is similar to Casio, at least similar to that FX991ES. So I suggest this app or any other similar app with FX991ES features. For those who are using desktops or laptops, I'll be giving you a link, a download link for a scientific calculator emulator. So it's actually Casio 991ES Plus in your computers. So I'll be posting also a video on how to download and install this emulator. Or if you have your old scientific calculators, you can use it. Next is to listen attentively. And last, download the notes and practice. I'll be posting the practice exercises and you can answer it after this video. Let's proceed to the first part. The question. What is a limit? The concept of a limit or the notion of it is actually very familiar to us. We have encountered it in our everyday life. We actually tell that a limit is something like an end or a boundary or a hindrance or sometimes we say it as the ultimate goal. So it's the limit. We say the sky is the limit. So for a clear picture of this concept, let's try to imagine that we are mountain hikers and we're trying to climb the highest mountain in the world, Mount Everest. So you want to experience the mountain as what climbers always say, that for you to experience the entire mountain, you need to reach the peak. However, Mount Everest 
is a very dangerous place. And it happens that the peak itself is a prohibited region. So the question is, how do we get to experience this notion of the mountain? How do we get the full experience of the mountain without reaching the top? The answer to this is actually very simple. We don't need to reach the top. We just need to approach the top. So oftentimes, hikers do not actually reach the peak or the most top of the mountain. They just come to the nearest region of this prohibited part. So let's try to think about some realizations here. So in mountain hiking, we don't necessarily need to reach the top to experience and understand what's on the top. We just need to approach it as closer as possible. And so we can actually say it may not be the top, but it feels like the top. So we can compare this one to the concept of a limit in our basic calculus. So just like here, the hiker, we can say that the hiker is like the input of the function. And if you can remember the function, it's actually f of x. So let's say that our function is a linear function. So let's say 2x plus 1. Okay, so the hiker here is the input. And the input function, the input of the function is actually the variable x here. This is actually the hiker. Okay, so the hiker, to experience this mountain, to get the full experience of the mountain, he actually approaches the prohibited region. And this prohibited region is the value that the hiker approaches. So let's say this value is a certain number C. So again, this number C, certain number C, is something that the value of x, the hiker, approaches to, but it will not actually reach it. And so the hiker, the experience that the hiker gets is actually the function. So the mountain to be experienced as the function. So in other words, we can say as that uh, as the input, the hiker of the function approaches a certain place, the prohibited region, certain number, we can observe and estimate that the function or estimate the experience as it approaches this unique number also. So the unique number is the top of the mountain. So we can actually say that the experience, the experience at the top is actually the limit. This is just one of the many examples of limits in the real world. There is another example like concerts. So in a concert, you actually don't get to be with the bands, but you get to approach the band. Like the audience, they try to buy tickets to, for the front view. So, But it's still the same. It's when you get to reach at that point, at that boundary, at the most front of the band, it feels like you are with the band, but you are not uh, physically with the band. You are just approaching, uh, uh, going near to the band. But it's just, it feels the same. It's with the band. So now that we understand the concept of limit in our day-to-day -day scenario, so let's try to look at the importance of limit as, the, as a concept in our life so, or in mathematics. So first, we need to realize that not all quantities are discrete and straight. So when we say discrete, it's whole, whole numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, and so, or something, it's uh, complete. So there, there are actually things that are not complete or we cannot actually find the end, okay? So 
we call those things as continuous. Okay? So, opposite of discrete is continuous. So, it's not uh, whole numbers. It's not uh, parts. It's not by parts. So, and that all things are straight. Most often times, buildings have curves. So, we're talking about curves. And there are actually unique shapes rather than rectangles. So, in your junior high, you have rectangles and it's very easy to solve for the area of the rectangle so it's just length times width but how about this remember there are shapes that look like this how do you now solve for the area so no more simple area equals length times width anymore also limit is important because there exists the concept of infinity or the concept of the very, very, very large number. So how do we describe the behavior if of the function approaching this uh, concept? So how do we describe infinity? And that can be described if we associate a certain limit relating to this infinity. And lastly, it's because change exists. So remember, the entire subject was brought to life because of the concept of change, because of the eagerness and the importance of describing change mathematically. And remember, change is continuous. Change can be infinite. So how do we describe this? How do we describe motion? Motion is not static. It's dynamic. How do we find the maximum and the minimum values? So, remember, if we don't try to associate a certain value, a certain limit to it, we can never understand these concepts. So now it's your turn to think. What are other specific examples in your life where you encounter the concept of limit? And that's it for this video so on part two we are going to formally define the limit of a function so see you there